Hi, I'm Roger Bindle, and this is a report on an aquaponics farmer growing hemp, bluegill, tilapia, and a giant tomato plant. Watch and catch the inside scoop from Mike Knight at Clean Fresh Foods on his switch from tilapia to bluegill, from greens to hemp, the business model, and balancing out this new ecosystem of fish and plants. Where we've come from the last time that we met, I hadn't integrated the uh, bluegill into the uh, system yet. I think they were just uh, three or maybe a couple inches uh, big. So what we've done in the last few months is removed six of these tanks. So these are 1,200 gallon tanks. We took six of them out. That reduced us about you know uh, six, seven thousand gallons of water. We got rid of most of those tilapia, all tilapia, and now we have four tanks of tilapia. Those are the tanks with the nets. These tilapia are seven pounds, world's largest tilapia. And now our uh, bluegill have, uh, on average, probably uh, six inches, but we have some that are eight and nine inches. Uh, we probably have eight or 900 of, the, of those fish. So we're hoping to keep adding to the bluegill, further reducing the uh, tilapia. Uh, remember also, tilapia like a little bit higher uh, temperature. With the bluegill, they like a little bit lower temperature, closer to 68. That, plus the fact that I reduced the tanks and the amount of water, I should be able to cut down on the wood that I'm burning. So you got a little main, maintenance thing here to do between the, the temperatures, and you got to keep them one temperature and the other? Yeah, yeah, well, we're trying to do it. We've, we brought the temperature for the tilapia down. They don't seem to object too much so far. So what we're really trying to do is get rid of the tilapia altogether, even though they're good producers of waste. And uh, I'm trying to figure out how many bluegill does it take uh, to poop to equal one big tilapia poop. Well, no, no, weren't you working in conjunction with the UW up in uh, Stevens Point on yeah. this too then? So are you kind of helping them out and studying the, the poop to whatever rate? We haven't been studying the poop, but what we've been doing is growing these. They're growing theirs under more laboratory conditions. So Chris Hartlib at uh, UW Stevens Point uh, Aquaponics Center was the one who gave us these uh, bluegill. And uh, we, we just like that. It's a local fish. So uh, Chris uh, gave us those. He's growing his. We're growing ours. And then the uh, UW Veterinarian School, uh, uh, a school of veterinary, uh, comes down and helps us out with fish occasionally as well. So far, except for things that we've done wrong ourselves, the bluegill have been hardy, pretty hardy. Uh, and I think that uh, it points well for uh, their future in aquaponics in general. So really what we've got here is another scenario. No one has ever combined tilapia and uh, bluegill. <laughs> right in the same water systems they're sharing water so we've done that successfully in fact in this wave tank we have a tilapia and some bluegill they seem to be getting along fine but we'll eventually reduce the tilapia out and we'll have uh, all bluegill so what are you going to do with those uh, nine pound ten pound whatever <laughs> those i saw so if we uh, fillet off a seven pound fish you know we're going to get two pounds of fillet uh, pretty easy off of it and uh, that we have fish fries so this is our response to the COVID. We're having fish fries ourselves. <laughs> You'll have to let me know when you want to get rid of them because uh, I'd try cleaning them again. It was a lot of work. I remember cleaning those the last time. They're, they're not as easy as cleaning a bluegill, that's for certain. We reduced these tanks. We had a couple sharpshooters in here who filleted them and uh, resulting in a few hundred pounds of fish. Fun stuff. After learning about his plants for bluegill, we took a look at the greenhouse side with his hemp plants and vegetables. Mike is a contract grower for hemp starter plants. So we have the squash and the cucumbers right next to the hemp. A new variety, CBD cuke. <laughs> You've caught us at the uh, very tail end of uh, uh, the first grow. So for outdoor farmers who will start putting uh, at least CBD uh, CBG uh, hemp in the ground. So we contract. We were a contract grower uh, for a new strain of uh, CBG, and uh, we probably moved uh, 10, 20,000 out so far, and probably have 10 or 20,000 starts left. So we've got uh, the very end of the uh, uh, starter plants, the CBG starter plants that are going out the door all all this week. So all the hemp that you see in the greenhouse will be gone soon. And that's why it looks so ragged in here is because we've just been working. You've got a little bit of our, uh, our personal stash of squash and uh, uh, cucumbers 
that have been going for probably a month and a half or two months. We still got a little bit of lettuce going and that's for our uh, restaurant customers at uh, Paoli Schoolhouse uh, down, down the street and personal use and we also trade out for uh, eggs and uh, uh, whatever else people are growing around here that will trade lettuce or fish for. We got a little endive going, some peppers going, some beets going, our basil. We just took down our uh, Thai lemon basil. We've got the tallest uh, sunflower plants in, uh, in Wisconsin for May 20th. Because all the restaurants are closed, our microgreens are, we've kind of chilled everything down r right now. We're getting ready to actually clean out uh, the whole greenhouse and clean it up uh, from a, a long winter of growing. Basil, kale, some Swiss chard. I love the uh, your sunflower. That's a yeah. Quite the plant there. That is quite the plant, and there's probably 40 or 50 blooms on it in, in all the places. We had no idea that it would uh, how it would take off. It's all an experiment. These are our tomato plants. Uh, part of the reason why we, uh, part of the right reason why we have all these tomato plants is uh, we weren't sure how all the uh, hemp in trays, so the starter plants, were going to absorb nutrients because we need to keep the nutrients out of the water. So when it recirculates back to the fish, it doesn't make the fish uh, sick. So uh, tomato plants pull out a, an awful lot of nutrients. So we have these to really help balance out the. Uh, uh, the water. These were planted in uh, February or April of last year and we pulled tomatoes off of them until probably a month ago. So you got over a year's worth of tomatoes yeah. off of these plants? Wow. Yeah. This whole area, this right here, this whole area is four tomato plants. <laughs> and then we just started cloning them and putting them in. But uh, I'm sure if we dig we can find some tomatoes in here somewhere. Who knows what we'll find in here? We had a high school student working for us that went missing, so maybe they're in here. They were pulling off some uh, tomatoes last week, but not, not very much. And these are the these are the starter plants that that uh, were uh, growing under contract for WM Organics, and uh, this is a new tray system for us. It floats. It's actually in two parts, All right? So this comes off of that part. We're able to germinate right into this tray or transplant clone into this tray, and then. It just floats, and that takes, that's a lot, because you'll remember we were using the uh, styrofoam before, where we'd have to grow on here and then transplant into the uh, uh, holes on the styrofoam, and then it floats down. Now we were able to find, this is a product that we bought out of Athens, Greece, of all places, and uh, it's widely used in the tobacco industry, and uh, we're testing out for hemp, and it seems to perform uh, beautifully. Oh, and you've got the styrofoam that you used to use over there, so... We're just getting rid of it. Well, this has got to be better, just even ecological. Yeah, and we can reuse them and reuse them. I mean, not that we didn't that way, but we just have few mover, uh, fewer moving uh, pieces with this. We just germinate in here, and then we can just uh, uh, let them go until we move them out the door. Uh, and these are uh, all stamped. This is May 18th, so they'll probably be in here for a week or two to grow out the root base. They'll be put outside so they harden a little bit and get used to the wind and the uh, uh, moisture outside, and then uh, they'll be sold. Uh, but for our part, we're just contract growers on this, and we're just, uh, we didn't want to deal with the buying or the selling or it was CBD, what strain or what what's popular. I just have no clue, and I don't really need to have a clue. I just, someone came to us and wanted us to grow it, so we took an order to grow 50 or 60,000 uh, starters out, and uh, that's what we're doing. And this is the tail end of that process. 
it looks like a war zone. <laughs> so we'll probably uh, clean out. Uh, we have a little bit of an aphid problem, so the only way for us to solve that is completely clean everything green out of the greenhouse, just let it sit for a week, which also gives us an opportunity to clean up the place in general. Uh, outdoor gardens will come on, so lettuce and this normal, some of the, a lot of things that we grow aren't uh, as in demand. I think there'll be a lot of outdoor gardening going on this year. So we'll just kind of take the summer off. Well, and you've got hemp plants in uh, various stages of growth through here too. Are, now, are you harvesting and then selling for oils, uh, or are you? So what we've been doing was we grew from seed originally, and uh, we grow from seed and when they get large enough, we start uh, clipping them and cloning them and propagating them. And so we end up propagating, uh, so grew up from seed. From the seed, they get large enough to where we can start propagating them and that's how we uh, go from seed to, you know, 5,000 seeds to 50,000 plants. And then the other thing that we did was uh, uh, the company that we're growing for brought in some mother plants uh, from another state. So we've got a different strain, which might be popular as well. And we grew these mother plants out to where then they themselves may produce 500 or 1,000 of these. So clipping back those larger plants turns these into a, another 1,000 plants. And then they can grow large, and then you can propagate those. And it, so you just kind of create more and more plants that way. Well, it works pretty good. So you don't have to start them all from seed then. You no. do a little clippings and uh, cut from there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can start just from mothers. So there's companies that that's what their business is. They sell seed stock or mothers or and various strains. But for us, you know, we love growing food as well. And uh, uh, hemp is a, a, another possible source. We just don't find the market for CBD as stable as it is for uh, uh, other commodities yet. It's a very new industry, and they just don't quite have it together as far as buying and selling. Um, but we've, we, we expect that that will stabilize in the next few years. Well, and I remember um, a year ago or so that, uh, yeah, you just even for the produce, you didn't have the regular markets. So they're not forward contracts. Like this is a forward contract. We're getting paid a certain amount at a certain date to produce a certain many. In the, in the food in part, we, we don't see that. So it makes it very unstable for a small uh, uh, grower like ourselves. So we're always looking for, I think in this setup for me, the business model has to be a contract grow where you decide on the price ahead of time and you know, have your goals. Otherwise you're growing it and hoping that you, you can go out and sell it. So what are you doing uh, with the big plants down there then? Uh, they'll take those out. So we'll be done that end of this week and uh, 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 people that we're growing for will pull out all these uh, plants. A lot of these that are dead or dying will just go away. And the large mothers back there, they'll either put in the field or take over to their greenhouses uh, and uh, 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 propagate them from there. So you're not you're not selling any of it for the oils then. You're you're selling the plants. I'm just doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. You know. The the market basically is you either grow premium. Uh, plants. It's like the THC market. You're growing pl premium plants for the uh, flower, uh, for the bud uh, that they sell in the retail stores. Or if it's kind of lesser, they're putting it into uh, extracts for oil and uh, other other products. But for us, not knowing the, the front end or the back end, which strains, which, which seeds to use, or which are popular, or what's better, flour or extra oil, or what's the hottest product, we didn't want to have anything to do with that. It was just like going to a, a restaurant, and I don't care what they do with the lettuce as far as putting it in the salad, just tell me you need 100 heads of lettuce. Just tell me you need 50,000 uh, CBD starter plants, and uh, that's where we want to fit in. That's that, that's our little niche. We just want to be contract growers. And how are you balancing it all out with the fish now? Because I know you've got all those new bluegills that are growing up and the tilapia are getting like really big. Yeah, uh, well this has been fun because uh, I had twin goals. Uh, one goal was to reduce the amount of energy that I use because the biggest, one of the biggest uh, resource uh, uh, constraints here is we've got uh, about 40,000 gallons of water in the system that comes out of the uh, ground at 55 degrees. But the uh, lettuce, the vegetables, and the fish like it a little closer to 70. So we've been cutting, even this year, which wasn't a harsh year, we probably burned 40 cords of wood. So we have an outdoor uh, uh, furnace 
that's uh, sheathed in water and, and we use that to heat the water in here. So we reduced the tilapia. Uh, we took out six tanks with about 7,000 gallons of water out of the system. We introduced uh, about 1,000 uh, bluegill. We reduced uh, the tilapia from probably 2,500, 3,000 to about 600 tilapia. So we're, we're slowly reducing the tilapia all the way out because the bluegill like a little cooler water. So we we'll think we'll save three or four degrees here and uh, uh, plants will be uh, comfortable with that temperature range as well. So I'm hoping to save about five or 10 cords. This is an experiment from last year. We're just letting it go for a while. We're just leave, seeing what, what happens. Here you look, see this uh, tree trunk in here. That's just huge. It's just like one big bud. Yeah, so our plan for the summer is basically just to clean this place up, uh, get ready for the next contract. Uh, so probably somewhere around uh, July or August, we might start planning again for another, uh, another round. It, it could be indoor THC, it could be corn, it could be sunflowers. We're really open. We've had a very good run at being able to grow almost anything. Uh, my favorite so far has been uh, baby pak choy because we can grow so much of it and it's so delicious. It's a two week, three week crop. They're about that big and they're, they're, they're you know, we can grow a million of them. But that's what's happening in uh, late May 2020. I guess things have changed a lot since we were here a year ago. And of course, your bluegills have grown up quite a bit. I think they were about, oh, maybe this yeah. long when we uh, yeah. stopped in last year. Yeah, I'm going for a, a prize, trophy prize. So if anybody needs a nine inch uh, bluegill to mount, come see me. We can arrange it. It won't be cheap. <laughs> but you're waiting for them to get to be 15 inches. I'm waiting for, I'm just trying, I would like to see like, you know, even the tilapia, everybody grows, everybody. Most people grow tilapia out to about a pound and a half. Might take about 15 or, or months or so, and that's market size. So that's what you see in the grocery store usually. But we were using the fish for the poop and not for the meat because we didn't find the, uh, the market uh, for it satisfying. Uh, and. Uh, so we're hoping to do the same thing with the bluegill and see if we can't coax a bluegill to be a couple pounds. So check back. <laughs> but right now I think there, we've got some uh, that are probably eight or nine inches. And uh, I'm hoping that you'll be the first to taste it and let us know. Yeah, because I, I haven't been able to go fishing because uh, all the craziness going on. Yeah, year. we can solve that. I brought my fishing pole and tackle box because I thought I'd catch me some fish. but. Yep. Turns out Mike gave me some fish. Got a nine inch bluegill here. Get their fins up a little bit so it's prettier. Yeah, so those are bigger than the ones that we catch. Yes. <laughs> you want to take these two? I uh, sure. They're big enough to eat for you, aren't they? But I'd love to be the first to eat. You won't be uh, running your supply down here or anything. So. <laughs> I think we're good. Oh, gee. Lettuce, basil, little 